Very, very good morning to you all and welcome to our worship here at St Andrews with Castlegate. Our worship today is led for us by a minister, the Reverend Chris Ford, and our service is being broadcast live on YouTube. And so we send our greetings to all of you joining us from home this morning and at the same time say a special welcome to any visitors here with us in church. Our service today culminates with the sacrament of Holy Communion and we invite all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ to participate. I should add that today is also special because we will welcome into membership Sean. The funeral service for Mary Wrigley will take place on Friday, that's this coming Friday, the 9th, at 10am at Gedling Crematorium, Catfoot Lane. Details of this service and a video link have been circulated by email. And a reminder, please, that we are now seeking your recommendations for new pastoral elders. Recommendations need to be received by either the minister or church secretary by Sunday the 18th of February. That's in two weeks' time. And I need to pass on the thanks of the whole church to all of those who helped to make last Friday evening's light night event so successful. Once again, we were able to host a number of visiting acts as well as make use of much of our own talent. The refreshments and wide range of items on display and different activities to join in with makes us a well appreciated venue. In fact, a beacon, no pun, uh, in the city centre. Thank you again to all involved. Thank you. I'd like to add my thanks to all those who took part on Friday night in Light Night. It was a wonderful, wonderful evening and a great celebration of the talent that we have in our church and indeed wider in, in Nottingham. But I particularly want to say a thank you to Jill who organised it and a thank you to Helen and her team in the kitchen. They worked really, really hard over Friday night and I think a round of applause is due. Looking ahead, uh, most of our regular organisations meet as usual this week. In addition, the Elders' Council meets on Wednesday of this week at 7.30 in the Small Hall. As advertised in the January newsletter, this year's Lent groups will be following From Now On by Rachel Mann, which is based on the film The Greatest Showman. The course will be launched on the afternoon of Sunday the 18th of February, and a screening of the film in, the, in a cafe church style act of worship will take place. Full details of the screening on the 18th, the timings of the Lent groups and the course book will be circulated in an email to, uh, by members announce in the next few days. If you have already planned to attend the screening or a Lent group or both, please note that the sign-up sheets are available in the vestibules and the course books will be available at coffee time. Further questions, please, should be directed to Nicola. Uh, there will be a fair trade stall in the fellowship room today. Uh, the team have asked me to uh, ask you to consider purchase of a fair trade Easter egg this year. Eggs may be viewed online in the Ethical Superstore website and then orders placed with Anne or Sally. Uh, next Sunday, the 11th, uh, I made a, a typo in the, uh, uh, the email that went out earlier. Next Sunday, the 11th of February, our worship will be led by Louise G and will be followed by our church meeting. Uh, and uh, a final note, please, that some of our young people, Zach, Billy and Alex, uh, attended the youth assembly. And I'm delighted, pleased and proud to announce that Billy was elected to the National Youth Executive of the United Reformed Church. And I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Finally, following worship today, do join us for coffee served downstairs in the fellowship room, where you will also have an opportunity to purchase leftovers from Friday evening. Thank you. May I also please add a plea for recommendations for new pastoral elders. Uh, so far, Noel and I have received two lists only, so please in the next fortnight 
do give that prayerful consideration and let Noel and I have your recommendations for new pastoral elders. These have to be members who have been part of the congregation for more than a year and who you feel will make a good pastoral elder. Let us worship God together. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving towards all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. We sing together our opening hymn, number 377, 377, This is the Day. Come before our God in a time of prayer and reflection. Let us pray together. God beyond all imagining, forming us in your own likeness, delighting in all that you create, we turn to you. We are made by you, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. God beside us, companion on the road, who has come to give us life in all its fullness, we listen for you, we yearn for you, we seek your loving touch. God within us, closer than our own breathing, present at the heart of all that is, we wait for you, we are open to you, as you waken us with the promise of new life. Eternal God, please come near to us as we now come near to you. Make us confident in prayer, joyful in praise, and responsive to your word. So may we know your peace in our hearts and your love in every moment of our living. Loving God, we ask you now to lift from us all that weighs us down, or spoils our relationship with others, or separates us from you. In a moment of quiet reflection, we place our lives in your loving acceptance, 
And we ask for your help in changing those ways of living that need renewing. Eternal God, you cleanse us of our faults and you remove the guilt that hampers our living. You desire deep and inner truth and you accept us as we are. Please create in us pure hearts and renew us from within. For we offer you all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who when he was on earth taught us to pray together and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Isaiah 40, verses 25 to 31. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the only head of the church, in accordance with the decision of our own local church meeting, we are now to receive Sean into membership of this congregation of the United Reformed Church by transfer from Kipax Methodist Church in Leeds. We rejoice in the pilgrimage that has brought Sean to this time and place. We give thanks to God for every community of faith that has nurtured her faith along the way and for her desire to walk with us in Christian faith and discipleship. As she comes to unite with us in this congregation, we invite her to reaffirm her confession of faith and to promise to live as a faithful member within this fellowship. If you are able, would you all stand, please? Shan, I ask again, do you confess anew your faith in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you promise to share with us in the life of this church to be faithful in the privileges and responsibilities of church membership? I'm going to ask you all a question, and if you feel so able, would you please respond together, we do and we will. 
in welcoming Sean as a fellow member in the life of this church, do you promise your friendship in the Lord? And will you give her your support in prayer and service so that she with us may continue to grow in the knowledge and love of God and to witness to Jesus Christ, our risen Lord? We do and we will. You remain standing as we pray. God of grace, you call us to be your servant people, and you gather us together into the body of Christ. We thank you for Shan and for her willingness to work with us in serving your kingdom. Confirm us all in the power of your love, to live in your spirit, to love each other, and to walk the way of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. John, in the name of Christ, we welcome you. May we grow together in unity and be built up into the body of Christ in love, to the glory of the one God, creator, friend, and comforter, now and always. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. Our choir will now lead our worship in the singing of the anthem, Day by Day, Words and Music, by J. Althaus.
hymn that Sean has chosen for her membership service is number 474, 474. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. <laughs> Let us pray together. Almighty and eternal gift, eternal God, we lay before you our gifts in whatever way we are able to give them, praying that they may be used wisely and well in the service of your kingdom and throughout your world. We pray, eternal God, for our younger friends and their leaders as they now leave for their separate services, praying that in their time together, they may come to love you more and discover more of the way of walking the way of Jesus. We ask our prayers in his name and for his sake. Amen.
Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him and when they found him they exclaimed everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he travelled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Thanks be to God. The writer of the 40th chapter of Isaiah reminds us that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. It is now well attested in books, in articles and in journals dealing with the neuroscience of religious experience that those who have a faith, a religion, who pray on a regular basis or who regularly have what we might call numinous experiences are generally happier, more content with life, more resilient in the face of trials and suffering, are healthier in body, mind and heart than those who do not have such an approach to life. We have all known for a very long time that relating to God is good for us. For Jesus, it was the only way to find wholeness and to find inner healing. Homespun medicine is alarmingly common. When we can buy teach-yourself books on self-diagnosis, when we can find out just about anything we need to know about the human body on the interweb, there are many out there who practice dubious forms of self-care and, indeed, care for others. And we live 2,000 years after Jesus lived. In his day things were a lot worse. Not only did they have a very limited knowledge of the workings of the human body, they also had a vast system of superstition, seeing devils and demons everywhere. So a bad case of eczema or psoriasis could find a person outcast from society as a leper, an epileptic fit or a migraine or even a stutter could land a person with an evil spirit. And there was absolutely no comprehension at all of the realities of personality disorder or mental illness. All such were demons. So Jesus' healing of Simon's mother-in-law in bed with a fever could have a very large number of modern interpretations and no doubt might have been very easily and quickly sorted out today with a cup of Lemsip. Other cold and flu remedies are available. <laughs> what is so remarkable about Jesus, and it is remarkable, is that he did not buy into the superstitions of his day. It really is quite astonishing that someone growing up in that kind of cultural atmosphere could come to another understanding of what was happening for people 
and have the courage to share it and do something about it. Through deeper understanding, through an uncommon compassion, and through being prepared to offer a healing touch, a large number of people were released and freed to go back into society to live full lives again, indeed, to return to their families. These healings may not have been instant. They could have taken place over a number of days, and the stories that we have may, of course, have been contracted and maybe even sensationalized in order to stress the Messiahship of Jesus. What is not beyond doubt is that Jesus had a remarkable gift for helping people and for helping people to find healing and wholeness. The darkness recognizes the light, which is exactly how conscience works. The cured recognize their healer. But Jesus does everything in his power to keep those who would praise him from the rooftops quiet, something that we know has come to be known as the messianic secret. Jesus had another way for messiahship to be discovered. It was and is the individual's connection to God that mattered. And it was and is that alone that brought and brings the new life. If you have ever spent a day counselling others, or looking after someone who is ill, or indeed working in a caring environment, then you will know that that is physically, mentally and emotionally exhausting you come to the end of the day feeling like a wet bus ticket and you wonder how on earth you can repeat it all again tomorrow. Jesus has spent probably many days looking after all those who came to him for help and the poor man is absolutely exhausted. And because he knew how to take care of himself from his experience in the wilderness, this very wise man took himself off for some moments of quiet renewal. Off to a solitary place meant that he went into the hills for several days, which is why his friends had such a hard time finding him. Before starting the next stage of his journey in ministry, Jesus recognized his need of physical and spiritual renewal. So he took himself off to a place and a time where he could simply be with God. He needed to take care of himself, and so do we. And yet, this is often the thing that we find the hardest to do. Finding space and time for ourselves is sometimes not at all easy. For we all need places and times where we can be renewed. We do, of course, have many opportunities for such renewal. Worship, especially Holy Communion, is just such an opportunity. Bible studies, prayer groups, Advent and Lent courses, our own private daily devotions, holidays and all kinds of sport all offer us the opportunity for connecting with God and with our souls in a renewing way. But there is something special and unique about finding a place and a time simply to be. A retreat is one way of doing it, offering a special place and a special time where we can take ourselves off to read, to pray, to walk in beautiful gardens and amongst beautiful buildings, to join with sisters or brothers in their regular pattern of daily worship, and equally important, to be fed extremely well. It is vital in the literal sense of that word. It is life-giving and it is renewing. We all need that place and that time where we can just be, where we can let go of all that is familiar, whether that is stressful or not, and give ourselves permission to be outwardly and inwardly renewed. If Jesus could not do his ministry without such time and space, then how on earth can we be faithful disciples in our own ministries without taking care of ourselves? without regularly renewing our spiritual and our physical energy. The United Reformed Church has people in every synod dedicated to helping those who wish it to find a special place to be and to pray. 
Our own Synod Training and Development Officer, Derek, organizes such times for our ministers. There are opportunities across the church for spending such time with others of a like mind. There are, of course, many ways of taking care of ourselves and of renewing ourselves. Creativity, physical activity, hobbies, just standing and staring at a beautiful scene, just going for a walk, space to listen to our bodies and our souls. Finding that space and time that allows ourselves simply to be with God is absolutely central. Because it gives God the opportunity to nudge us in a new way. It gives us the opportunity to recognize where we are living in a way that is not at all helpful. Such time was central for Jesus. And for those who want to walk the way of Jesus, it will be crucial for us too. We sing together our next hymn, number 652, 652, God when human bonds are broken. In our prayers we shall be thinking about stillness and peace, and so before we begin our prayers we will light our peace candle as a reminder that we need to keep praying for those places in our world where there is not peace, in particular Ukraine and in particular the extended Middle East. So we come before our God in a time of prayer and reflection. Let us pray together. 
Almighty and eternal God, we give you our thanks for all those times when our faith in you and our dependence on you has strengthened us and helped us through difficult times. We thank you when something that we were worried about has turned out all right, when we were able to face and get through a situation that we had feared. We thank you that you are always with us, in all situations, surrounding us with your love and strengthening us with courage and determination, strength which we could not find without you. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for moments of stillness and peace when we can find them, when we can become aware of your desire to meet with us, when we can know in the depths of our beings your love for each of us, when we can listen for your voice within, prompting us in a gentle whisper. Eternal God, teach us, we pray, to make time and space for you and for ourselves, to create opportunities to pause and ponder, to take stock and to give thanks for the many blessings you give us, opportunities to try to understand what it is that you need us to hear. Eternal God, where we are facing a situation that we fear, where we are being asked to take a risk and find our courage faltering, please grant us your inner peace. Eternal God, where we are not sure what is being asked of us, where we are looking for guarantees that everything will be all right, then please grant us your inner peace. Eternal God, where we are not sure that our contribution will be wanted, where we reach out to help another and risk their rejection, then please grant us your inner peace. Eternal God, we continue to pray for peace in our world, for peace across the Middle East, for peace in Ukraine, we pray for peace wherever there is violence and hostility in our world. That others may come to learn a new way of being, learn a new acceptance, a new ability to get on with others who are different, a new love and a new patience. Eternal God, help us always to trust in you our strength and our protector. And so help us to lay aside everything that holds us back from being the people that you call us to be. We ask our prayers, spoken and unspoken, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus was often a guest. He shared many meals with his friends, and they long remembered his words shared around the table. Some people disapproved of the company that Jesus kept. Yet he ate and drank with all kinds of people, showing everyone the love of God. Wherever people met together, Jesus was glad to be welcomed and to be fed. Today, we are his guests. He welcomes us, whoever we are and whatever we bring, and he will nourish us around this table. We sing together our communion hymn, hymn number 448. Here, Lord, we take the broken bread and drink the wine, believing that by your life our souls are fed.
On the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with 12 of his disciples in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. And the gospel writer tells us what happened that night. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, Take this, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new, in the kingdom of God. Today, we are the friends and disciples of Jesus. He invites us to break bread together in order to remember him and to pray that God's kingdom will come. Let us pray together. Loving God, the world you made is beautiful and full of wonder. You have made us with all your creatures, and you love all that you have made. You have given us the words of your prophets, the stories of your people through the generations, the gathered wisdom of so many years. And you have given us Jesus, your Son, to be born and to grow up in difficult times when there was little peace. He embraced people with your love. He told stories to change us all. He healed those in pain and brought to new life those who had lost hope. He made friends with anyone who would listen and loved even his enemies. For these things he suffered. For these things he died. Yet he was raised from death and lives with you forever. And you give us your Holy Spirit to teach us and to strengthen us, to remind us of Jesus and to make us one in him. For all of these amazing gifts, eternal God, we thank you. And we praise you that we can be here today around this table. For we have heard the good news of your love. The cross is the sign of your arms stretched out in love for us, and the empty tomb declares your love which is stronger than death. So please send your Holy Spirit now upon us, your people, that we may be made ready to live for you and to do what you ask of us today and every day to come. And we make our prayers through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the love of the Creator, one God, to whom be glory and praise, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Please retain the bread and the cup, so that we may eat and drink together.
This bread symbolizes for us all that Jesus achieved in his earthly life and ministry. And may the spirit in which he lived be our spirit. This cup symbolizes for us all that Jesus achieved in his suffering and death upon the cross. And may the spirit in which he died be our spirit. Let us pray together. Loving God, you have nourished us generously at this table. As we have remembered Jesus, 
and rejoiced that he is with us always. So we are ready now to follow him and to be your people in the world of today. May your Holy Spirit show us the way. Make us holy and fill us with love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. We conclude our worship as we sing together hymn number 533, 533, Lord of good life, the hosts of the undying hail thee as conqueror on the heavenly field. So let us now go out in peace and in confidence to live and to work to God's praise and glory. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all and all those whom we love and cherish this day and forevermore. Amen.